What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another Golden Dice podcast episode, and this is going to be a spoiler episode. We just have a handful. FFG did a live stream uh, displaying the uh, new mechanic, Smuggle, and so we're going to take a look at uh, just seven cards here. We give our review of the Smuggle mechanic and talk a little Snuggle. bit more depth Snuggle. of snuggling um, Snuggle. on our podcast, our main podcast. So if you are interested in that, be sure to uh, check that out. But uh, we're gonna we're gonna get this train rolling, choo choo, and go ahead, as Jeremy would say, choo. and choo fucking choo. Dive into this. So the first one that we have is the Vigilant uh, Pursuit Craft. It is a five cost space unit. Just has one aspect symbol, which is vigilance. It's a three five vehicle transport. It has Sentinel, and then also says Smuggle. Seven vigilance. And what that says here is that if this card is a resource, you may play uh, play it for its smuggle cost. Replace it with the top card of your deck. So you can resource this card, and then it's when you have seven resources, you can play this card from your resource row, which is very powerful and kind of have like an extended hand, um, essentially. Now you are overpaying, right? At five, this is uh, not bad, but uh, they also do factor in that smuggle cards can pay for themselves. So if this is a in your resource, you can exhaust it for, as part of the seven that you have to pay. And so the the clarifying part here too is that it doesn't matter here, but cards in the in the that we're gonna look at in a minute are having a chance to have a different symbol in the smuggling area. So this is a vigilance card, and then in the smuggle you would have to pay seven, and the aspect it's looking for is vigilance because you see that next to the seven as well. But that could be different, right? That could be yellow, so you would also need cunning in your deck to play that 4-7, and if you didn't have cunning, then you would have to pay 9 to smuggle this uh, out of your resource. But, yeah, so, I mean, so it's kind of hard to, like, fully evaluate. Um, it seems like all the smuggle stuff has plus 1 because it can pay for itself. I don't love paying 7 for this, for a 3-5 in space with Sentinel, but the fact that you can resource it, still have an extra, seems pretty good, but I'm curious as to how good something like this might be. But it's also like a common. So, I mean, the this isn't like the top tier it's, for smuggling it's, cards. <laughs> it's a get it's a get out of jail card. Like, you're like, all right, I need, oh, I'm getting run over in space. I need a Sentinel out there. Like, oh, I got one stashed in my resource row. Yeah, my first thought was it's going to be like uh, the uh, limited form, either draft or it's going to be good in uh, your pre-release. Just because, yeah, it'd be great to have a Sentinel in space, but at the same time, it's like, I I don't even think I want to pay five for a three five sentinel. To be honest, because what you can play what you have crap you have crafty which is uh, not crafty system uh, patrol craft system patrol craft which craft is, a, is what, in the, the a four the cost name. three four it's like okay for one less health you get the same thing for one less so I'd rather that <laughs> over this personally, um but yeah I would definitely don't feel like playing seven playing seven paying seven uh unless it's like limited form where you're like oh, they've got a big space unit, I need to get something, pull it out, kind of thing. It's so there, just... I guess there is something to be said for that five health bump in the sense that most, like, two drops in space only attack for two. So that five health bump could have you absorb uh, a whole additional attack from yeah. a little, little turd. Um, but the problem comes in is if they have, like, a two and a three coming at you, then that five is the same as the four. Yeah, they put turds in the game. They did. They ha the actually the system patrol craft is a little bit of a turd. <laughs> it's cylindrical. Um, Anybody? This, this, this just jumps out there. to me. This just jumps out to me as like a card to explain the mechanic, right? Like it, it's not supposed to be some kind of strong, powerful staple in every deck. And there's, you know, it's right. it's. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Uh, it's just fine. Uh, I I think. <laughs> I don't think I run it. I don't think I like it, but I understand the mechanic. And this was a um, good first card to show the idea. And they get they vary in power and sn uh, snuggle cost. I, I immediately want to say snuggle. Snuggle, dude. Um, the snuggling Pop. cost. You got to snuggle a little more for this one. You know? Pop quiz. Yeah, baby. Whose ship is whose ship ball? Who's just about to ask that, being dude. There? Ketsu. Pop quiz. Ketsu Onyo. Oh yeah, Ketsu. What what is Ketsu's ship actually called? Shadowcaster. Yeah. There you go. Good job. I ran this in uh, X Wing. Yeah, that was that was a card in uh, Destiny too, right? They got the Shadowcaster. Mm -hmm. in there. That was a legend. Yeah. Sure. 
Yeah, it was really good. Yeah, it was good for those uh, you know, modification decks because you think you got mods for like free or something. I forget what it was. Yeah. Scott thought he was gonna got us, but I already had it in the chamber ready. I'm surprised. To get oh, get wrecked. Flockton has no idea what I Get wrecked, Scott. Holy. <laughs> Flock's like, you're illiterate, Scott. It says vigilant pursuit uh craft, not shadow cast. You know he can't say the word vigilant. <laughs> Scott, you idiot. It's the system patrol craft. That's <laughs> yeah. who's that's who ship it is. Um all right, yeah, no, I agree with uh Brian's take. I don't think it'll be crazy, probably fine, like in limited play. Um but if there is leader who uh like synergizes with smuggling stuff too that could be yeah um, it's not the worst it's only brian's take it's fine yeah 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 because yeah, brian's take was objectively correct duh yeah oh yeah. flock did say the limited part yeah flock said the limited part i did i did but uh, flock says limited part for literally every spoiled car we see could be good and limited could be good and limited every card is good and limited dude i draft it dude my brother yeah, okay. Yes, Anyways, Flock, you got the next it, one. Uh, yeah, you know, three, five. All right. Seven. Next one, we have uh, Unexpected Escape. It's an event, one cost vigilance. Uh, it's a trick. Another trick. This is good. Blue trick. Exhaust a unit. You may rescue a captured card guarded by that unit. Pretty cool art. It's got uh, Kylo in it. Pretty sick. So, about to freak out because Ray's gone, dude. Yeah. Uh. uh First thought, this is great to get something back for one cost. You get to, if you know there's stuff that's capturing that you want to put this in, possibly even sideboard or even main deck. Uh, actually, I probably wouldn't main deck this because unless you know you're going to be going against a lot of stuff that's going to capture stuff. Because um, it's kind of useless if nothing's captured. Oh, it's also a unit. Um, oh, is, is it? Oh, it could be even the enemy unit? Oh, snap. You're only going to exhaust an enemy unit. Why um, would you exhaust your own unit? I, my first reading, I thought this was exhaust your own unit. And... <laughs> okay, so this is a little better than I thought then. All right, cool. Sounds good. You get the exhaust enemy unit. And I mean, you can exhaust your own unit to return one of their that's, units to play if you that, want. <laughs> that's that's kind of what I thought. Okay, Ooh. yeah. You got to get hooked on phonics, bud. Oh, wait. Uh, okay, someone else do this because I'm lost. So what? You you. So your opponent is playing Mandalorian. You have this card in your deck. They yeah. captured something because, right? He captures people when he plays an upgrade on them. You no, it's now just one upgrade. What's that? It's just it's just the rifle. Oh, just the rifle. So yeah, he played the rifle on him. You can now spend one to exhaust the Mandalorian, who is a unit, and then you can rescue the unit that was captured by Mandalorian. So you now get your unit back. Exhausted. Uh... Exhausted, because yeah, everything returned from captured is exhausted. All right. I didn't want to exhaust my own unit. What a, I'm exhausted right now, actually. That's a lot of yeah. Was, the flock paid just, one to exhaust me. A lot Dear of Lord, explaining man. for a card that's very mid. Yeah, very mid. mid. This art, I love. It, it, in my in my mind, I'm looking at Doctor Doom with a cross guard lightsaber, <laughs> staring at Ray because yeah, it's but, green. Yeah. It's yeah, green. It, it, took, it took me a second to be like, "What? Oh, yeah, it's kind of uh, yeah, it's Doctor Doom." Mm -hmm. really funny i mean it's it's very much again this is another one that's like it's a limited card that's like good and limited and then in your deck it's probably nah, it's sideboard never same play dude thrawn blue S stocks are going up play jabba grab a trick yeah it's a trick Here we yeah go. yeah the general problem is all right cool you can exhaust a unit and then the other unit exhaust like but then you you're know, playing Thrawn, dude. You can exhaust a whole bunch of stuff. I know. The <laughs> redundant. Yeah. How many things are they going to have? You're just not going to kill anything ever. You're just going to exhaust everything. Yep. If you have Dib, so. it's free, though. Yeah. Uh, if you have Job, it's free. It's a trick. So you can search out with Job and then play. It could Whoa. be. It, I mean, that is like a very punishing sequence. If someone spent, does something to capture something, then you're immediately like, and exhaust that thing. Like, it's a very, like, punishes a sl the slow play yeah. of that. But it's meh. On the next one, Scott, you got the next one. What is... Oh, yeah, I'm still not on the right page, probably. Crosshair. Brian, you want to take it if you're there? Oh, I got it. No, oh. I got it. <laughs> so, Crosshair. Four cost. Ground unit. Command and villainy. Two attack. Six health. Weird big butt. Imperial. Clone. Trooper. This card has a lot of text on it. Action. For two resources, this unit gets plus one, plus zero for this phase. 
action with the cost of exhausting the unit, this unit deals damage equal to his power to an enemy ground unit. So essentially, homeboy's got a sniper rifle. He's not going to take any attack damage back because he's doing it this way rather than by attacking. I think this is a, a very interesting card. It has a lot of upside. The problem is its upside is very like slow. Like, it takes you a second. Like, I got to buff him, and then I got to do this. Now, like, you know, you can you can do some things where, you're like, you're getting a fair bit of attack out, and he's not going to take the combat damage back. So it's kind of weird. He's almost, like, not using his six health all that often, but it does make it so your opponent's, like, not incentivized to take him out. I think it's going to have really good keyword coverage for a lot of things. Like, Imperial Clone Trooper, that's going to be... Um, a lot of different things can get hit. Like, you get an experience on him, all of a sudden, like, he can just pop and shoot something for three. Like, that's great. Um, I think he's really good. I think he's a uh, four cost. Like, that's there's not that much in four cost that's very attractive right now. So, I think he's going to really cover that slot. Yeah, it's it. The, the four cost almost is like the worst part about him, unless there's green decks that are content with, um, like, not ramping as. As like some of the other decks we've seen before, right? Like, uh, uh, yeah, it did just like I mean, four, the four cost historically is just awkward because they generally yeah. want to go three with resupply yeah. or super laser attack into five. Mm -hmm. But he's still really good. I don't think that. Yeah, discounts. Six, I mean, six health is a lot of is a lot of health. Yeah, but not I as much as even, Java, dude. Not yeah. as much as Java. Even the Tarkin think. though, like this could be like easily like a three seven with one resource for Tarkin Imperial. Oh yeah, yeah, and that. and Tarkin's like most of his decks like don't feel the need to ramp as much because they're yeah. probably just well, spending even, every resource. Even to, if like... you even if you do yeah. ramp, then you have you you play him like he's like it's like if you're playing Luke, you want to play like one resource back. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yep. So this is good because I probably even in like the Tarkin deck probably won't even use the action for the getting the plus one unless you have two extra resources and you know you can blow something out with it. Yeah, that's but that's for most filler part, for I, like late game. Yeah, but for a four drop that you can now block loss like, filler. Seven, mm -hmm. Dude, filler's good. But yeah, a four drop that is a three seven potentially with Tarkin could be really good. So that's where I see this is an instant auto included in like for now at least for Tarkin. And he it is nice too that he can just on hand strike true essentially, uh and get around yeah. like car, like Sentinel cards. Sentinel. I think is, is really uh gonna be a good play for him. I I'm interested to try him first in uh Grand Inquisitor. And see how that goes. Readied. Yeah, because he can be ready. You can even buff him up one to get him to three, and then like do a few resets with him. And six mm -hmm. health is is plenty for for some resets and stuff. So you can use him as removal, and then like finish him with attacking into base and stuff. It's some interesting points there. And especially because he's not going to take um, damage, but when he does his ability to to damage enemy units, you would never attack into an enemy unit with him. Yeah, You're, you just use his ability. Um, since he's not taking damage there, you do have, like, the full six resources to play with. You don't have to trade. You're just getting the upside. Yep. Cool. Uh, Brian. And he's an uncommon. He'll be real good in limited play. That one's for you, Flock. Yeah, you can you can throw, like, an upgrade on him, and he'll sit there and just, like, clear one thing a turn. Which yep. is, in limited play, yep. is very good. And then you also have just a bunch of extra resources anyways. You know, yeah. like, towards the late game in some rounds, so. Yeah. Brian, you got the next one. Privateer Crew is a ground unit. A command, two cost, two attack, two health, underworld, uh, smuggle uh, for six command. Um, if this card is a resource, you may play it for a snuggle cost. Place for the top card of your deck. Uh, and when played using snuggle, I give three experience tokens to this unit. Um, I think this is interesting versatility, and Jay-Z said it himself, he's like, it's not, it's not a very good two-drop, but you can play it as a two-drop if you want to, <laughs> and, um, you know, but it has a little versatility if you snuggle it later, and it becomes a little big booty, and, um, I think, uh, I think it's good, I like it, it's not gonna be a staple, I don't, I don't think, um, but it's certainly not need, bad either. I think you would need, like, a leader that has, like, a kicker for snuggling. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's the snuggle leader, the snuggle bear from the yeah. laundry detergent. <laughs> yeah. I feel like Jabba could be a snuggle leader. Yeah. 
And I, I almost mean, wish if there's no Han Solo in this set, like as a leader that works with with smuggling, I, I almost wish they delayed Han Lando, in the set too. Lando. I think Lando, Lando, or, or I, I'm crossing my fingers for my boy Hondo Onaka. No, no, yeah, I'm still saying all those are good, but I'm like smuggle. If the first character I think of when I think of smuggling is Han, so I'm like hoping that there's a good Han in here. That yeah, but we don't this. actually see him do any smuggling. Not yeah. true. Not true. Not true. He smuggles. Force Luke awakens. Oh, we won. Force awakens. He, sn- he snuggles himself. And Chewie. <laughs> yeah. And Ray and Finn. And BB. Yeah, I mean, BB? episode four. He he snuggles Luke and Obi to the right planet, but it was just not there. <laughs> <laughs> he's not snuggling them. They're not. You know, he's just providing transport at that point. Without he does, the imperial he does... presence. Exactly, exactly. He does have to evade the Imperial uh, yeah. people at Tatooine. Um, yeah. Anyways, for the card... You're saying uh, he's a human trafficker. He's, but for the good... Snuggles. <laughs> In the good way. He's getting people out of the bad stuff. In the good way. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, historically, two cost, two two is, is pretty rough. As a yeah, I learned there are good human traffickers. So. The only one that has been debated in this uh category is like guardian of the wills because like the force trait is so good um but generally i don't think there's any two twos that that see play but yeah the flexibility here is it can come in at six as a five five which still doesn't feel like great base but also you still just gotta it's gonna be hard to weigh the importance of having smuggle on these cards for the flexibility until we actually like get to play with them like, it's not strictly, yeah. like, I wouldn't just strictly view it as, oh, I don't want to pay six for a 5-5. Five five. It's, like, the added flexibility of that you can resource it and have, like, a plus one card in hand to then play it for six. Yeah. Still not saying this if card is, like, worth it. You don't it, want but... to play six for a 5-5, five five, but you're fine paying six for a 5-5 five five if the alternative is you play a two drop. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly, exactly. And waste four resources. Yeah. But... Uh, if there's a leader that eventually is like, you know, exhausted to s- snuggle for one less or something, you know, like, mm. then this card's pretty good, you know, at cost. Um, I concur. I dig it. Like I said, I, I don't know if it's going to be like a, like your staple, uh, you know, include auto include. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, the, the fact experience tokens are also like upgrades kind of makes me nervous. So, you know, just some things that can get hit. With that, you know, if these mono decks like we talked about on the podcast get better, dude, aggression can defeat how many upgrades? Two, up to two upgrades, I think. It's like they play aggression. I don't know. No one runs uh, it. <laughs> do something else. They're what? using aggression. To, actually, you know, they could play aggression, defeat a experience on it, and then shoot it for four. Boom, dead. Yep. Two. So that that that's what makes me uh, would be nervous about that, or something like bamboozle. Like, there's definitely some cards out there that aren't yeah, terrible. They, they can they can just like send it back or waylay or something like that, where it's just like bad bad feels because you can't you can't play it again. You have to put it in your resources and do that whole rigmarole. Yeah, you got to wait for the next turn to actually do it. Yep. Yeah, which you can do, which is fine. Yeah. Um. All right, uh, Brian, you just read that one, right? All right. So the next one I got is timely intervention it's a tactic it's a one cost event it has one aspect command it says play a unit from your hand give it ambush for this phase or you can smuggle it for two command and yeah give a unit ambush so i heard Everything you like has ambush. ecl uh now you get ecl yeah, you get ecl so, you, get, you get how to ecl at home um i am forgetting before we get into the card what is this guy's name this bounty hunter. I loved him with his, his like, he, he uses his hat like Captain America. And then he, like, slides down uh, the hill. You mean it. he uses his hat like the character from uh, Mortal Kombat, whose name I can't remember. Oh, Odd yeah. job from Austin Powers. Or James <laughs> Bond. That guy. Um, what is the... It's Liu Kang's buddy. What is Liu Kang's buddy's name? No idea. Embo. Embo? Embo. Embo is this guy. Is this guy, yeah. I have no you're idea who about, you're talking about. Not Scorpion. Kung not... Lao. Kung Lao. Kung Lao. Kung there we go. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, so, yeah. I mean, ECL is super powerful. Uh, but ECL... So, I've I've seen people make the point that ECL is free. And I agree with what they're saying. 
they're not trying to argue that the card is free from ECL, but that the giving an ambush effect is free. Yes. Now, ECL does have the restriction of six or less, whereas timely intervention can go um, beyond that, but you still are going to have to pay one, maybe two for it. So still think this card is pretty good, but for people to say it's like a three of in, in decks right now already, it feels like it's it's a stretch. But like, hey man, if I could ambush in like a you know, some of these seven, eight, nines, like a reinforcement walker. Palpatine unit. Yeah, Palpatine unit. Um Avenger. Yeah, Avenger, like Devastator, mm -hmm. right? These are like fairy top end, like perfect world <laughs> scenarios. And also all those you also gotta think it's plus at least plus one if you're playing it from your hand. Probably plus two. Uh, but yeah, likely plus two uh, for that. So yeah, you're talking. If you're playing green, it's fine anyway. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I definitely could see this as being at like at least a one of two of because it's worst case you just resource it. And now you have the option to play it later. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Yeah, it's it's very good. It's so far it's like the best of the smuggle cards that we've seen. Yeah, some of the smuggle cards feel like yeah. you only want to play it smuggle. This one, it's like, I'm totally cool paying one to give it any card ambush. I'll play a resource down to get it, because ambush can be very, very, can swing games. As we know with ECL, ambush swings games. Yeah. So if you're at six resources, and you're like, well, I got a five drop I really want to play, and I got nothing else in the hand, well, I'll play this to give an ambush to just do stuff on the board. I mean, so. just some cards, like if we're thinking cards that are currently out, um, uh, Zeb, like he lo he really likes having ambush. Like, all right, yep. more ways to give him ambush. Um, you know, Rook. that way you're not like sitting there like, oh, I didn't get to use like my ECL and my steadfast battalion. And it's like, well, yeah. all right, you can you know, do both. Um, yeah, there's a bunch of things. Yeah, it can help bring in some of those characters that like need ECL to be real good, but don't make the cut because there's like stuff that's like better that you'd rather use ECL for. Yeah. And then obviously, like we mentioned, anything like that is on the top end of things where they're out of ECL range. So, I mean, obviously, like if, if you're running a green, if you're green villain, you've already got uh, Vader and he's got ambush. So you kind of don't need this for him. But if you're thinking like on the hero side. Yeah, there's actually really nothing currently, at least in green, because your other big things already have, are snow speeders and they have ambush. But there uh, could be something. Yeah. You could ambush wedge in and then other things have ambush. <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah i mean further top end i mean like ambush like a uh, home one might be nice because then you get restore we get the restore right away yeah not too bad yeah uh, i'm playing this, playing this with luke and get ambush luke in the issue is like not, ambush, not things out ambush with, with space units the restore is not as consistent be, is not as consistent because there's not necessarily i think something in space yeah but again this can this flexible it can do things like ambush on who else? What else is top end that doesn't have ambush already? That's the thing. We're going to get an entire another set, and there's going to be a bunch of things that other stuff, yeah, would be really good with ambush, but don't have it. Um, and they're going to be in like you know, and uh, um, non -LC, non uh, ECL costs. I'm curious of the interaction of like how does the timing with the like of this out with Bib? Like you're still playing an event, so I assume he would still work with yeah, smuggle I cards. Why, I don't see why not. So like you could still play this for one in in bib decks, in my palp uh, OTK uh, deck, you know. So yeah, just some uh, some interesting points. Given ambush, you know, units are generally costed around where they are base wise, and so like paying one to give them ambush could be pretty, still pretty good. Give yep. them an extra keyword. Blizzard a assault ATAT. That that could make that card playable. <laughs> yeah. Getting, getting close. Home one. See, I'm just like going through like the reinforcement walker, like you said, that's actually a really good one. Yeah, you get two uh, triggers. Yeah, Emperor Palpatine, the unit, just because he could, you could, you know, depending on how you want to do it, you could like prep the thing that you're about to overwhelm into so that you yep. just get the extra or you can just eat two things um, and get your overwhelm. Um, yeah. The the Luke one is interesting too in that you could play Luke, ambush him in, and if he dies to whatever it is, you can still then minus six, minus six something because he died and would count towards that. So you technically could like 
kill something with him, and if he dies, then kill something else with the six, <laughs> the minus six, minus six. Yeah. The sacrifice, Luke. Yeah, the sacrifice, Luke. Hey, <laughs> Chimera could be a play now. You could actually attack with it before it dies. <laughs> uh huh. But yeah. Um. Anyways, yeah, that's a rabbit hole of stuff that you could play with timely intervention, and uh, you know, could make some of that stuff seem playable. Flack, we're gonna give you a second chance to read a card. Okay. I can read. I just don't comprehend it. Okay. So we have an upgrade. It's a one drop. Hot shot DL 44 blaster. It's a, uh, what's red? I forget what red is. Aggression. Called. Aggression. It's very aggressive. Um, <laughs> attached to a non vehicle unit. It has smuggle, a three cost with, uh, cunning. So even though this is aggression, the smuggling cost is, uh, cunning. Um, so when played using smuggle, attack with attached unit. Uh, so this is good. Uh, I like it a lot. Uh, for one drop, plus two is good. But like, I think obviously you get the best out of smuggle because you do get the ability to give a unit plus two and then attack with that unit. So this is definitely going to be a uh, a smuggled uh, upgrade. And I think in the video uh, they talked about how this is, I think was it Jeremy's deck where it's in a strictly cunning deck with no vigil, no aggression. And yeah. this is strictly used as a smuggle deck or a smuggle card um, to, to give that extra plus two whenever you need it. So I like this a lot. It's going to be a very, very good card. It's a rare, so I can see why it's a rare. It's very, very good. I think it more commonly we'll see play in a deck where it is the only, it, it, you know, you're not playing aggression. When you're just playing the cunning and you're just using it for for the smuggle. Yep. Yep. Smuggle and attack with it. Yeah. I mean, this. I mean, you know, even think about the starter with Mando, right? When you play an upgrade, you can exhaust yep. him a unit six or less. Like this is really powerful with him, and then you can attack with him right away, do six damage to base or whatever. Yeah, the fact that you can attack whatever you want is really good. Yeah. Yeah, you're not. It's not a defined to a, a unit. Yeah, you're not restricted. No, it's it's a, a very attractive card for a lot of reasons. Um, you know, like, aggro doesn't hate it because it's like you're just putting it into the the resource row and then, like, later you're just like, oh, bam, I get the plus two and, I'm, you know, just helpful. Just, like, is increasing what you've got um, option-wise between, you know, to finish out your opponent. Yep. All right. And uh, the last one, Scott, you got it. We have... Cartel Turncoat, it is a one-cost, cunning, heroism card, underworld vehicle fighter. Base unit, two attack, three health, and it has bounty draw cards. So if your opponent destroys or captures this card, so um, you know, that is an element with the capture mechanic that is something to be considered because, like, you know, they could capture this card, you rescue it, then they could cap, they could destroy it or capture it again so they can might be able to cash in the bounty on this multiple times um this is a very good card uh, as we've seen things that are um two threes in space are are pretty good and can get pretty aggressive this card leads me to believe that there probably is something uh in this set uh villainy wise to help deal with these two cost two threes because right now uh, villainy does not really have an answer to those except for the uh seventh fleet defender um or well, the interceptor yeah, yeah but that comes out reason. too late that's the problem <clears throat> you know if, if you're using the interceptor to counter like an a-wing or this that's coming out turn one like say someone plays two of these turn one you're 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 in trouble like you just can't kill them effectively because of the three health because everything has two attack so my guess is there's going to be some villainies. There's going to be some more things to deal with the three health stat line on on a small spacecraft. Yeah, uh, I is that really? Yeah, I guess the the only one is that is is a turn too late. I mean. There are some, like, other three drops that, like, you can run. Like, you have the Seventh Fleet 
And then you yeah, have you disabling can, you can Fang Fighter. You, you run the Consortium Star Viper, the Con Celestial Star Viper. The, yeah. You. yeah. You run those, but um, there definitely is a hole in, especially like what villainy has to deal with plays where it's like, oh, drop a 2-3 drop a on turn one. Um, in this case, you know, possibly have two. Obviously, you can't wing the you can't wing leader this. That's the plus side. Yeah, I mean, I I do think two like I I get more nervous if they play like an A wing. Like that three damage makes me a little yeah, bit more but, nervous. Yeah, than, the A wing yeah. is is obviously the best one, but like the more redundancy you can have into that drop, yeah. where it's just like, all right, you know, I'm gonna overwhelm you in space, and you do not have good counters until like you know, like you said, turn four. But that's a little late. Yep. Hey, we're getting closer and closer to uh, an actual swarm deck. You know, some more good one drops coming out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And not for IG88, though. Nope. Yep. Sad. Doesn't, doesn't work for him. <laughs> uh, It'll be good. He would love it. The stonks will go up for my uh, showcase. No, they're going down. Going down. They're it's all go, hero. They're going to go up. It's all they're going to go up. <laughs> Can't go any further down. Yeah. It's doubled since you bought it, dude. Welcome to the Flock School of Economy. Yeah, that's how it works. Um, so yeah, uh, these spoilers generally like not too crazy. I think the more exciting ones were from like the starters, but also that's because we got leaders with that. But I think this one and the DL44 are kind of the highlights. Uh, Crosshair is really good too. So three, three, yeah. I half. I'm I'm silly. I'm silly. And the fact that you got like all right now we have we know we have the snuggle mechanic. The snuggle is very, very cool. Yeah. Yeah, I love yeah. snuggling. Yeah, the, the the bounty one, like you said, Scott, I think is gonna be really interesting for this. Like if your opponent can like consistently just capture cards, especially like low cost ones, and like <laughs> trigger this this bounty multiple times without them effectively attacking a Ooh. lot. Could be very yeah. interesting. And they draw yeah. two to three cards or something. Yeah, it's, I mean, like, you know, obviously that is a downside to playing this. Your opponent gets it, they draw a card. Um, but I think in, like, aggro decks, your opponent drawing cards isn't that big of a deal because they won't they won't have time to play them. Especially because there's not a lot of, like, two-for-ones from events. Yeah, within really, the game, really, so. yeah. There's, there's not for anything right now. I mean, until you get to, like, Orbital or Overwhelming Barrage. I keep calling it Orbital. But until you get to, like, Overwhelming Barrage, you don't really, like, hit events that are like, oh, splash in the table. Yeah. Agreed. Uh, all right. Any other thoughts on uh, the spoilers? No. Yeah. Hmm. Cool. Uh, yeah, appreciate everybody tuning in. We'll do these as we get more spoilers coming in and in. Um, excited to talk about more of these mechanics. Still hard to, like, gauge the full potential of them so we get to play with them and see and have like comparisons because you know as you look at set one a lot of the single aspect common cards like aren't the greatest things in the world but they're definitely good in like sometimes specific spots sometimes you get a steadfast battalion that has like a specific interaction of yeah um having a really good leader come out of five while you have ecl so you know there could be things like this but you know you'll definitely get some commons like uh distant patroller and ardent sympathizer and, and you know things like that so it's still worth looking at them um and keeping up with them you know like we said cartel seems like a really good card and that's a but that's double aspects so that that doesn't mean what i'm talking about anyways but you know you get what i meant you know what i say yeah you heard words i said them in order, <laughs> order. so unexpected escape i have to exhaust my own unit yes and... that's the part of the cost <laughs> yeah all right Appreciate everybody tuning in. Be sure to follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, all those places. We got over daily under videos. how many times Flockton's going to misplay that card? Many, 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 many. He's going to tell you that is he misplays the other cards. <laughs> I don't make mistakes. Mistakes, mistakes make me. Just happy accidents. And this recording, happy, my God. happy accidents. I like that one. I like it. Brian's been tuned out for twenty-five minutes. Brian started tuned out. Brian That's was true. asleep. He woke up. I woke up and then I fell asleep again. You woke up like that. We'll catch you all next time. Deuces. <laughs>